The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. I'll be back in one second. Uh, okay. Oh, now I'm getting an echo. Uh, let's just get this. Uh, let's see if you can see anything here. Uh, I, I'm not sure that. Oh, uh, screen one. I, I sound, sound a little bit like uh, Larry. I just understand very well when you have those technical problems. So what am I doing here? Share your screen. I did that. I think my shares uh, my screen. All right. Let me just check and let me maybe someone in the tent. Let's show time Skype in. I've done that. Uh, I think I've done that. All right. Uh, this is an important session that we need to get everything done. Uh, am I being heard? Live, Tiger? Uh, let me just tell, let me ask my engineer, am I being heard? It's terrible when you can't be, oh, wait, I could, I could find it right here. Okay. Okay, testing one. All right. Can you hear me on the phone? What do you mean the phone? Uh, it should be live. All right. Well, let's just go through the numbers. Someone can tell me what's going on. I'm going to do this quickly. The Dow is down uh, 248 at 32,166. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. Is that right? Hello? No, it's not on the phone. Ah, uh, okay. Well, technical issues, yeah. So we, we're in the den. I'm just going to put uh, Skype in. I haven't Skyped in. All right, here we go. But I got it on the earphone. I know this is still from my webinar last night. It didn't shut off. All right. We're all set. I've Skyped it. Okay. But now I've got echoes and everything. I've got whatever it is. Let's just do this. Dow's down 257 at 33,169. We're looking at the S&P. So the S so finding the Dow, and I'll I'll do this in a moment. We'll look at it. I just want to get this update done before the break. The S and P is down twenty four at four thousand and sixty six, below the up support line. We're looking at the QQQ, which still has not seen the um, moving turn negative. That's, we'll see what happens with Apple. But this can go into a sideways rectangle move, and that's something that's really important. Uh, we're looking at the IWM, so the QQQs are down 64% at 316.65. The IWM is looking quite poorly. I have to take that off, I mean, there's an all sorts of things around here. Let's go to, um, I can, this. yeah, there we are. Um, what we are looking at is within the context of gold, and it's going to be really important, what I discussed last night, in my, uh, let's, go, let's see, I had air. I was looking forward to a nice, casual Tiger Technician's hours. All of a sudden, got this plethora of problems here. Gold, uh, up $60 at uh, 20, 2052. Look at that big spike like yesterday. And I think this is absolutely, countries are very nervous with our economic uh, conflagrations. And we're certainly looking at the XLF, which is the Financial SP Select Fund, we're looking at down 42 to 31.54. That's almost like a hard formation that we're looking at here. Within that con, why am I? I'm hearing noises and voices and also, oh, I see what must be. Okay, so that XLF is really important because that's the whole financial sector. Uh, going towards most recent lows of 3.29 with 3.56. And that's the reason why I think that countries are buying gold uh, for a safety factor. Big institutions are buying it. And that's 
the safety haven, like insurance, because leg F in the weekly chart could even be an instant restart. But what's happening is that gold has become the place to go to, and silver is now the parallel movement is moving with gold. It's up uh, 31 cents at 55.99 right now. Just about to get to some very strong resistance. Talk about resistance is simply to show you that gold on a very short term basis, this spike up, if it takes out 2,000 as support in the next three sessions, going into maybe Monday, Tuesday, that will say, okay, gold just on a very short term basis is going to take a bit of a rest. And there could be some rally in the XLF just to kind of stabilize for a little while. Let's continue. I want you to look at the uh, crude oil. Crude oil had a very sharp spike down. Below the, this is the continuous contract below the low that was made at 64.6 on the 20th of, uh, 20th of March. And, and the low last night was, wow, 63.64. Now it's quite high, four points high. I mean, seven. That's that's pretty impressive. But you remember that rectangle that I drew? I showed this long time webinar I did for subscribers to my open call that should be up today. Um, that parallel that I call this a propeller shaft with a sharp move down. This is the blade. This is the propeller shaft, a real long one, it's a rectangle. And the whole rectangle, uh, the technique that I use for the rectangle with the midpoint. In that in the mid channel that was broken, then we went almost equally to the downside. Instead of 64, we went to 62. Instead of 62, we went to 64. Bounced back up to the very resistance point of the rectangle, and then we came tumbling down and took out that loan. We took out the low of the 62, uh, sorry, 64.36 low that was made the week of the 24th of March. We went to 63. 64. Not very much, but you take it out. Ugly candle, and the night we're moving have still very young. So that said, I'd, I'd been honest with that because Exxon Mobil, I think Exxon Mobil's quite vulnerable, made a piece of top chat wave right at the instant. Uh, that, that, let me just get this correct. 119.92. That was the left side, right side, time at the chat wave inside wedge, target, resistance line. And boom, it just hit exactly and came down. I think the 200-period uh, moving average of 104 is the next target. It's at 107.42. This is the first time I'm going to say that Exxon now is a lot more vulnerable than it's been for a very long time. That doesn't mean to say it's not the downside. It's just that I think it's very vulnerable. Uh, let's just down here. This right. uh, yeah. So, a couple of some questions that have come in are N U E. This goes to the whole. This, typing in the wrong place. N U N E. This is new. We got new core corporation, steel company. Uh, Jane wanted to know about it. That 200 moving average has been and now it is consistent. We down one one point nine two. You really care. I should have said that yes, I didn't see your message and put yesterday. And the other one we'll look at in a moment is Tesla. I talk about that. Here's how it fits. That's what's happening. Thank you, Mr. Tower. Does that fix the SP down 25? We'll be right back. Hello? Oh, so, so that's why I'm hearing. I'm hearing the is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using this. a combination of fundamentals this and technicals. Yeah. Sign up now, for Rocket there? Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day okay. money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. So we were talking about new call. I, I, I did have some uh, problems because I had uh, um, different settings that I didn't realize had changed from my webinar last night. I didn't unchange them for today. I think we're all set. That should be very clear. Uh, so let me just see a question came in. Can I, Basil, can you look at Google? I have a short position that I'm at break even. Can you give me your thoughts on how to look at this long, tight consolidation? Is this accumulation or distribution? Aha. Uh -huh. okay. Dana, that's a, that's a question that in this particular phase, we're talking about, look, if you're looking at the new core chart, the daily, you see this pattern that I call the dreaded H pattern. Uh, and all it is, it's just real simple. I look at three major constructs for uh, patterns in the market. One is a straight line move. There's your straight line move. The other is an arch formation. And the other is a cup formation. But when it comes sharply down, it makes that H pattern, holds the left side low, and then tries to rally Unless it can close two out of three bars, doesn't matter what time frame, above that peak, especially if that peak's a peak A or a peak B, there's a real good chance that it's to come back. Then if it starts to roll over and takes out key support, there's a real good chance it's going to take out the left side low. I'll, I'll show you some charts in a moment, but that means you can go from a lowercase h to a lowercase m formation. Well, Yes, your, you can call this a very large H pattern. I like to look at it as two separate things, but it makes it sort of complicated um, on, on the notation itself. It just gets a little messy. But there could have been a little arch there, another arch here. But this is really a total a large one. This is a new quad. The reason why I'm talking about this is because of how many patterns have been. And I haven't looked at Google for the last uh, at least uh, you know a good, good few days, so we'll talk about that in a moment. But what I am looking at is there's a chance that new core can test the low of 139.03 that was made on the 16th of March, and if it takes it out, that weekly chart, which is for the for the last two weeks has three weeks has had a pink nine period moving and average under the 14, that can go quite a lot lower. And the reason why I make a big deal about it is look. X had the same pattern straight down. This is U.S. Steel in the steel sector, like Nucor. Nucor is one of the one of the great companies in the steel sector. But look what's happening. It's early in the game, 
X US Steel is making it almost a one-to-one -one with a propeller shaft, the one very thing we were looking at just a moment ago in crude oil. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. And the reason why it's so important to protect, rather than looking at how much I can make, you know, like, like Larry says, it's not how much you make, how much are you prepared to lose? How much how much in your in your expectations includes the idea that you could in fact lose money on the position. And that to me is really important. Well, here's this pattern that we're looking at in uh, US Steel. And I'm just going to say, oh, I didn't want to remove it. I wanted to add to it. New parallel. And look at this. That's, all, that's not a one-to-one, -one, but that's the pattern that you've got to expect is a possibility to the one to the downside. Okay, so let's so that's new core. I just want to finish Jane's question because I didn't do it yesterday. I should have done it. I didn't see it until late. In fact, I didn't see it until last night. Tesla, and the question was in new core. Um, I've got I've got a, a bit of a loss, and I'm short. I'm long Tesla and new core. What should I do? Well, I, I'd say. I should have said it yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't see that. I would be getting out of some of this at least because there's a good chance that it's going to go quite a bit. We're looking at the cyclicals, the deep cyclicals like steel, like aluminum. Look at Alcoa before I get to test. Look at Alcoa. It did the same thing. Arch formation makes a lowercase h pattern, then a lowercase m, takes out the left side low, says, okay, that means you can rally, but you're not going to take, probably not going to take out the high that was made at this peak B. And then lo and behold, it plummets down and now it's also on its way down. Today alone is down 59 cents at 34.43 uh, and, and nothing here is technically good. So I'm worried about that pattern. Now let's go to, I'll have to go to Tesla because I went to do Jane first. Tesla is holding very nicely at 160.38. It's down 24 cents. Look at this weekly chart. Look, there's an A to B equals C to D. That's the, uh, the Tiger Financial News Network. Majority of hosts always talk about the A to B equals C to D. I talk about it when I, I have the same technique, but I built it around a technique that I call the Chapman Wave one-to-one -one expansion parallel. I call it a parallel extend, expansion because it, it has to, for this particular technique to work, it needs to uh, do the turn down or up in the same number of bars. So there's a slight difference because my criteria are stricter. And look at this. Look at that. Same number of bars. Beautiful pattern. And that says if it doesn't hold, you've got to be very careful. So Tesla says to me, if you have money in it right now, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't say, oh my God, oh my, I, I. look, if you're in it, I don't know when you got in, Jane, but I would just say, I would, at this particular point, I'd take something off. Just money management says it hasn't done what you really wanted, and therefore take something off. The other is, if it if Tesla takes out, in this particular market right now, if Tesla takes out the key support of 157, I, I give it a little bit, uh, that's three points down, I suspect it's going to have a real quick run to the 150 support, that's 100. 52.27 was the low of the 27th. I think it'll slip right under it. So you've, you're looking at, you know, maybe seven points in Tesla right now. I don't see very much upside at this point other than a bounce. I'd be really careful. Um, in fact, if it was me in this environment, I'd say I'd sacrifice some upside in a stock like a Tesla because I'd rather have that cash ready to be put to work elsewhere. And if I'm wrong, it's going to go up. I can always, I'd rather make, see higher highs. There's this huge gap that it has to fill in the 170s. That's going to be tough to do in this environment. So that's it. Okay, now the question came in about Goog. And if you don't mind, I'm looking at Goog um, as Alphabet C shares, not the trading shares. I just do this from the, the core, which is the Goog. So Googie is sitting there uh, I'd like to do this to just draw in a rectangle formation. I love the fact that we've seen so many times so what wonderful clues this market gives you all the time. 109.63 was the bounce from uh, Google going from the, the, the mid 80s uh, back in October and it runs 20, 20 points. That's really good. And it goes to uh, more, almost 30 points and it goes to 109.63 at the beginning of April. 
it pulls back. A few days later, it goes to 109.58. I mean, we're talking about six cents away from making a new leg F, and it fails. Then it does this, and look what you can do. I love to use trend. I didn't really do that last night. I, I'll do it in a different context for my subscribers because I do it here all the time. Look, I like to join the highs of the wick. Sometimes I use the body, but mostly I prefer to get the wick. And in this particular instance, look, we've got a chance we falling X formation, um, and there's a real good chance that Google was the nine period moving average has not. This is how powerful the nine period moving is. You know what? When I get back, I'll show you some examples of it. So, what was the question? What the question is? Um, oh. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, a couple of questions came in. Looking at Google, we have a short position. Okay, so far that's the position to be. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, I was asked, that the first part was a little choppy. I'm sorry, it was my fault. I just had an overlap of, of, of something that was still connected from yesterday, from last night's uh, uh, webinar for Tiger. Uh, that's for my uh, subscribers in the opening call. Um, so let's just go back. So Google is down to $1.37. So now I can see. So um, I have a short position that I'm at break even. Well, I think by now you're probably not at break even because it's down even a little more since we've been speaking. So the question was, what is this pattern all about? To me, this is, you see, let me go here. 
so last night we were looking, remember the Dow, I said we're waiting for the nine period moving average. It can take a long time, which it has, for this M-shaped pattern to unfold in the nine period moving average over the 14 period. Now we finally got it with an S. The day is young, it could change, but it's a daily chart. It's a gray, this gray line is actually the Dow on a closing price basis. So let's do this. We'll go here. This is the S&P index. I had to wait. It wasn't there up until a few minutes ago. Now you've got the S and the day's young, but it's an S on the, that means sell, on the S&P index. Basis, this is, I'm not saying to sell, I'm saying this is the nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average. So now the question comes in, look at Goog. Uh, don't type it there, type it here. Look at Goog. This is Alphabet. This is the call. This is not your trading vehicle, but it's, the pattern is 100% the same, just that the uh, one is the trading instrument, the other isn't. Look how this green line has held so beautifully, and it's going to take time. Look at how it did that when it made that M-shaped top and then pull back, you had to get a severe decline before the nine period moving average crossed negative. Look at the M-shaped pattern here. It still hasn't. It's got an M-shaped pattern in the nine period moving average, not the price, the nine. And that's just about about another a day or two of weakness in Google, and that will cross S. Does that mean, oh, my God, now this? No, it just means that you you finally got weakness in the indicator that you're using, the technical tool, which is the 9 over the 14, 9, 9 14 cross. That's what we call it, 9 14 cross. And uh, what we're looking at here, it says this low in price, remember this is just a closing price, this low in the price of about 103-ish um, on the 26th of April, if that's taken out, you don't have support for quite a while until you get to about 102 to 100. So that's the way I'd be looking at it. So let's do the same thing now with, what is this chart? Let me just say a daily chart. Great. So he has the same chart. I, I've spoken about this. Uh, where this is the Dow. Look at that. One, it's a year and a quarter worth of resistance. This is a Chapman Wave, um, what we call, uh, if you can see it right here. There it is. This is the... Okay, coming up. Chapman Wave Dog News Cloud Cover using the Dow Daily Chart. There it is. And I've said back on the 14th of April, I said DNCC, Dark News Cloud Cover unfolding. i uh, got to be real careful. So now what we're looking at is in the comparable um, aspect of having overhead resistance. Now I can go back to Google. In the short term, you've got a lot of overhead resistance. So I'm looking at this, and because the MACD is down, deflected lower, the stochastic's at 51%. The relative strength is even weakening now at 50%. The nine period is the only thing we're waiting for. The, the 200 period moving average is actually rising. So they should meet, and that's going to be the big test. I would give this a target on the very short term. Key support of 103. A close below 103 is your first step to say, now are we looking at lower highs and lower lows, or is it going to be lower highs and much lower lows? And we won't know. I need to see how the nine period expands under the 14 period moving average. And I want to see how the MACD nine period differential, the green line, expands below the slow moving 26 period moving average of the MACD. So those are the things. Deal one step at a time because that weekly chart is still very positive. So I don't want to get in the. I don't want to get in front of the chart to say, "Hey, you look at me. I'm saying go down." It will not see me. It doesn't care about me. It only cares about what the price is doing. And the price right now says, "It's uh, <clears throat> it needs to break." Yes, uh, two days ago, the low of 104.50 on a closing basis to say, "Great, the next step should be 103.61." That's the 200 period moving average and then low. But I will say to you, in this particular market right now, this is such a key phase because we're, we're seeing, for instance, we have a particular stock that is, I don't need, I, I, I'm trying to find the words on, or you can't call it sexy because you can't say that anymore. Uh, I, I can't say it's an in stock. I can just say, and it's not a meme stock because it's hardly ever, I haven't heard people talking about it. I, I'm sure there's a group, an in group that keeps talking about it. But it looks to me that it has the potential to become 
a stock of interests. Let's call it the stock or an in stock, an uh, in play stock. All right, too many words. I like to find one word for it. And that's up when the market's down. And I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, don't be one sided because, and I'll get to some of the other questions here. So that's Google, but I didn't tell you what to look for on the upside. I give it a little room. I don't know how much room you want to give it, but I would even say 106.73. A close above 106.73, and that can change day by day, but that's the one I'm looking at right now. Um, in the next two days, says that 9 period moving average is still showing residual strength. That's the difference. I'm seeing strength now, not weakness in that 9 period moving average. I want to see it close negative. I hope that helps you. Next question came in, and the question is, um, IWM, yep, IWM weekly looks uh, dreaded H-ish. Yep, let me just look at this, IWM. IWM, oh, the daily is the dreaded H right there. But that weekly obviously concurs, and it says if the IWM at 169 right now, if it closes on a weekly basis below the low that was made the week of the 24th of March, which is 167.46, I would say it closed below 166. Give it a little room. 166 starts to make that monthly dreaded H a possibility, which would take you down to a uh, uh, 162.50. So this is, you can tell, for the very first time in a long time, I'm getting very, very cautious about this. The reason why we've raised cash. Look at this XLF, even worse today, down 66 cents right now. Next question came in, and that is, uh, uh, Basil, are you willing to review the action in your newsletter short position as it challenges the B point you noted as... Ooh, yes, I'll do it. It was a question. I was going to just hold off on that. I usually like to give it a, a couple of days and a good few points before I discuss it because I, I'm, not, I'm not superstitious, but I believe that when your focus becomes patting yourself on the back, you know my, my expression, when you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. So I do not want to hit the tree. I've hit fences before. I've rolled over at different times. I've done other things, but um, <clears throat> all right. So let's just look at this. So what we're looking at is, so we have a position called the SPXS. It's three times short the spot. It's trading right now at 18.57. I'd say to subscribers, just take a tad off at 18.46. Uh, one... I'll go through the reasoning. Uh, Dow's down 390, S&P's down uh, 39. I'll be right back. Basil Chapel, Tiger, get your shit out. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, so this, just let me review this. As I say, it's uh, a question, so if I've got a question, I'll try to answer it. <clears throat> In the Chapman wave, there's never an H. It goes alphabetically A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's never an H. At G, you decide, have I missed an instant Chapman wave instant restart at a peak D? Is there an alternate count? Um, but there's no H. And we got to a doji candle at 417.56 <clears throat> in that spike. And now this is the one of the few changes that I've made in the um, <clears throat> my textbook Chapman wave methodology um, the stripped, and that is that once in a while, when that nine period moving average is so strong, you can get a down arrow which meets all the requirements, meaning that it closed under sharply under the 14 period moving average. The MACD was down, stochastic was down, uh, it ran out of energy, there was a candle, all sorts of things. But if that nine period moving average, and I've made such a big fuss for the last three weeks about this. Is so strong. You can get residual strength. It's like the tide. It's like I always think of uh, back in the days of my little motorbike. If I was for, it, it depends on how the, how much sand there was and how how the slide was. If there was enough, um, if there was enough, some kind of uh, um, gripping of the asphalt or the sand or whatever it is, I wouldn't slide all the way into the side or whatever it was. Because there was enough, the handlebars would grip and the pedal and you know, whatever it is would, would grip. But that stopping motion from the momentum of sliding, I always think of a plane coming into land. That momentum is so powerful that it takes an incredible amount of force to actually stop to a dead stop. And until you do that, uh, anything in the way, it depends on how powerful it is, uh, is not a, an obstruction enough to stop you. But in this case, you stopped at peak F, then you then you pull back, and then that momentum kept you going through that nine period moving average to this little doji candle at G. But it didn't seem to me that could really be an A because that would imply you're going to still go to a B, C, D to the upside in the Chapman wave. That, that would be so unlikely when all your technicals are starting to fail. That's the reason that, um, amongst other things, that's the reason why we did go short at pre-opening on Tuesday morning. And I wanted to go short, not the Dow, because we've still got long positions from October in the Dow, both the Dow and the uh, UDOW, three times long. I just wanted to separate. Occasionally, I, I, I don't mind. We've already taken off all the really short-term positions. I would go short. I just thought that the S&P, and look, the Dow today is down 0.90. Uh, the, the, the Dow is down 0.1.1. Uh, and the S&P is down 0.90. My thinking was that there was a chance that the 500 stocks would be a little bit weaker than the Dow. So far, the Dow has been a little bit weaker than the S&P. But anyway, so we shorted via the three times short. But there's no guarantee with anything in the short position because there's been such powerful moves to the upside and even residual strength. So <clears throat> I said, let's go step by step. I had to wait for today to see the nine period moving average move down, but you see the Chapman wave inside, this is the spy I'm looking at, Chapman wave inside wedge 
target support line. Remember, green we showed you just now, it was a resistance. Now you've got this support line in the SPY. And that says we've got right to it. This is exactly where you should start to see some kind of a, a slowing down of the momentum to the downside. Because if it doesn't do that, the low that was made on the 26th of 403.78, we've already gone down to, ooh, I just moved this away, uh, 403.86. Uh, we're uh, eight cents away or something uh, away from taking that out. So this is a key moment. So where would the question is, could I do an analysis of the SBXS and what's the reasoning? Why did it, it's gone above the level that I said, take just a tad off. We took a tad off for about a five, was a seven, a seven and a half percent gain in a, in a couple of days. That's very nice. At 1846, it's now at 1840. But I wanted to take something off because I want, don't want to change my, by very much our entry point. I wanted the stop to be just above that because I think this has legs to the upside. But talking about legs, this is only a gray leg A. Yes, it did go above the high that was made uh, back on the uh, 26th. And then that took out the left side low. There's a pattern I'd like to talk about, but I don't know if I'll have time. Maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow. What I just did, I sent to the uh, den... There was a discussion about um, about is this going to be some kind of uh, a bounce here or are we looking at a, a cascade lower from here? And what I said was, what did I say? Uh, wow, a lot of typing has gone on since I said that. Um, well, I said that the 41... Whew, Oh, coming into second support pit stop attempt in the 41.64 to the 41.62s. And why did I say that? Because this is the E-mini, the question was. If you look at this beautiful arch formation with the symmetry, left side, right side, price, time match, it went a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I had drawn in a dash, jam wave, inside wedge, target, support line and it went right there this x i didn't have even a t chance to put it in but normally i put an x in where my target is and that's right there um at about 41 78 ish or 80. Um, anyway we're in lower so now what we're looking at is this is the pit stop that says now we should see some kind of a rally attempt and there's the one minute chart peak a just identify the low bar count the next higher peak peak b and this is a peak C. <clears throat> Didn't have a chance to do it left side, right side, price, tie match here. So this is what we're looking at. So you see the reason why I took off. Um, should I do that? Oops. So if you can't go to the plumb line in the, at the bottom, this is the plumb line right here because it's so bumpy, then I usually extend out a little bit and I go to the arch, the first arch high or the first trough low, if that's what I'm looking at. And then I draw in a left side, right side, price, tie match. I'll do this live right now. And it says that by 10, mm -mm. Ooh, that takes a long time. By 10.58, by the time my show finishes, um, there should be an attempt, at least an attempt, to get to the 40.84.25 area. And that's on the March uh, e-mini contract. All right, enough with that. A couple of questions that I need to get to. So the answer is, <clears throat> it's a process. And if you look at these declining arch formations, dreaded H patterns, and we've taken out the left side low in the S&P XS from 16.97, made the week of the 3rd of February. So far, the low is 16.82. Is and we managed to get in just, just really close to that low. So we've got a little room. You remember, I like to, I know there are a lot of people that are in the market. You can hear them always in any interview. You'll say, I like to get the chunk of the move. I like to get the outside of the move. I like to get the very ictus, the very turnaround, because it gives you room for the risk reward. If you don't do that, then you, you're setting yourself for not the chance of losses, but the chance that your risk reward is going uh, going much higher. So that it did go over the high point. Yes, it did go over the high point of the, uh, of the, the that that previous high. So I like that. That's a good sign. 
At this point, I have to wait for the whole day to go through to see if we close with the nine period moving average in the Dow and the S&P with an S, meaning sell, just on that particular index. And we haven't done that yet. The days, yeah, we've gone under. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I've always been very important questions. I can't go through them all, but let me just show you this for the one minute chart. You see this cup formation? This is the E mini peak A, peak B. Great. I haven't had a chance to change the color because it's just the start of a move. Then it goes under that, it goes for another A, B, and then finally you get an overlapping wave going to a C. But the C didn't take out that left side high. That's important. But the, all the technicals are suggesting there should be an attempt by um, 1058, as I said before, to get to that level and just go one step at a time. So talking about one step at a time, that's the reason why in the uh, SPXS, um, this is a brand new move. The fact that we went underneath that 17.03 level, this is just history. Now you're starting a move to the upside. So I have to think of it differently. That particular peak is done. I'm looking at fresh 200 period moving average resistance in the next three days if the uh, SPXS cannot push into the 1887. It doesn't have to close, but push into the 1887, maybe 1913 area. It says that a chunk of this move down has just been made. Now there's a little bit of a digestive phase based also on the 9 EMA. So watch that closely. 
And what you want to see is, uh, and it, uh, this comes to the question that was asked about the VIX index. What am I looking at? So the VIX index, remember I said if it can get to the 19.80 area, maybe 20.30, that, but it has to close towards the high of that particular move with the Dow sharply down triple digit and the S&P down over 60 or so points. You know, we're not quite getting that here. But this is a leg B in the VIX index. And the 200 period moving average of 21.84 is going to be really key to watch. So keep in mind, the VIX is moving with the market in counterpoint. But that VIX if we get an ugly close today, the VIX is over 21.84, the 200 period moving average. That's going to be, must be taken seriously. If there's a sudden move up in the market and the VIX drops to 19.70, it says this is still the closest going on. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. Check out the opening call and 